In Islam, you see the symbol, the sword a lot, the scimitar. I'm going to I'm going to discuss that from my perspective, from a Moorish perspective, as well as from my own understanding. And I'm going to give you the breakdown of the sword from my own understanding, from the esoteric perspective, not from its physical use. We all know that a sword can use is used to protect, to defend, to cut things with and so on and so forth, to chop or whatever, to behead. We know the, 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 the physical uses of this, you know, of a sword. But um, I want to discuss it from another perspective. Um. Like within Moorish science, we have the divine five principles. And these principles are called love, truth, peace, and freedom. And the fifth one is called justice. And it's usually displayed on the blade of a scimitar. And that's very important because the blade of the scimitar as well as the scimitar itself is a symbol of thought. Because in the schools of occult, in the occult schools, pardon me, in different aspects of the occult schools, you know, the sword is a symbol of, of air, you know, um, of thought and so on and so forth because air is symbolic to thought and to mind so there when we dealing with the sword on the esoteric level and dealing with it from the Moorish perspective we call it justice and we also call jesus justice because we know that jesus in a sense was representing his people and trying to redeem and save them from a particular oppression that was you know being bestowed upon them so and he was bringing justice to that particular manifest but Jesus also made the statement about not coming for peace and bringing the sword. So the real sword is not a physical sword, but the real sword is the thought process because it is the particular thought that can cut or destroy. It is the particular words that one can use that can condemn something or someone or it can uplift and empower something or someone. The thought is an unseen manifestation that takes place and, and comes in to the individual and then it manifests itself through what we call words. And then we see deeds and actions and so on and so forth. But the thought to words is a physical manifestation in the sense from the unseen to the seen, because even though you can't see these words, you can hear them and you can feel them and they can cause an effect on the individual. And it comes from the tongue. The tongue is the sword. You understand? So the tongue is the justice because like I said, it could condemn or it can empower. So therefore, when Jesus said, I don't come for peace, I bring a sword. He was talking about his word, the words that he spoke, the way that he spoke. Yeah, you know I mean, the truth that he spoke, he spoke truth. Truth is the holy breath. Holy breath is art. Art is a law. And another name that we give to the thoughts of a law, one name is called man. Therefore, we're looking at man as justice also because man is the breath of a law made manifest in a sense, the will brought into existence. Therefore, the sword is not only a physical manifestation that we use to cut things with, but it is also in relationship to the development of the mind and the power of the mind and the way it can distribute information that comes through the tongue and the hands because these are extensions of thought. This is how we swing the sword. Not only can we swing it this way, but we can swing it this way. So it's all inner representation also. A man has a sword over his own self. He has justice over his own self, which is called a higher self and a lower self. And there is consequence for acting in either or. There's a reward or a penalty for acting in either or. You know what I'm saying? So we must choose carefully what, what swords we swing and how we utilize and live out justice because we are taught and we know and understand that justice is also an angel. And an angel is the thought of a law manifested in human flesh. Therefore, that angel carries also justice or the potential to give it in a sense. You know what I mean? Not necessarily by using the hands, even though the Quran gives us the permission to use the mouth, the hands, and then to pray. You know what I'm saying? For the individual or individuals or whatever. But the reality is, is that the sword actually is the sacred word because when you take the word sword which is s-w-o-r-d and you remove the s you got word so that s actually stands for sacred because the sword actually is the sacred word that comes off the tongue that has the power to give life or give death so in reality the sword is right here in reality we swing the sword and the sword's Actual rotations and so on and so forth start here in the thought process. Um, even the allegory of the cherubims with, you know, guarding the four gates, you know what I'm saying, with the flaming scimitars that spin 360 degrees. Well, the cherubims are just the symbol and allegory 
in this particular case that I'm using esoterically is the divine qualities and attributes in man. That scimitar, of course, again, is dealing with high thought. The fire is purification, the transformation, transmutation, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? The four gates is what's around man, in front of him, on each side of him, and behind him. Man is higher self, is guarding itself from its lower self, from the disbelievers, from, from the jinn in his own self. You know what I mean? Those, 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 those disbelievers, misery, grief, inc inc inconstancy, and so on and so forth. So with that note, I just want to share with you about the science of the sword. It's the sacred word. It comes from the thought manifest. So it's actually dealing with thought again. So peace.